Vicky. Hi. How are you? Good and you. Good, good, good. So the first time that I met you was not met you, heard about you was driving to a radio station, listening, hearing this voice, reading the news, like, oh, an interesting person. Um, seeing in the corridors at this radio station, not knowing that it was you, actually. <laughs> Uh, Let me guess, tiny person, big voice, brain. Th th yeah. There, there yeah, we go, yeah, yeah. there, there we yeah. go, there we go. <laughs> and later on, you'd actually join a DJ school, do, do your DJ course there. And um, yeah, I just thought it would be a cool, cool, cool opportunity for me to chat to you on this platform and um, just uh, get to know more about your journey. Because this is all about people's journeys and just, you know, inspiring other people, you know, um, to uh, help them on things. Anyway, too much talking. Where did this journey of your start? Radio specifically. So for radio, um, I when I was 17, we had to do, for life orientation, we had to do a shadowing gig. And I was like, I mean, I don't really want to do anything generic. Mm -hmm. I want to I want to ideally go into radio. So the first day I went and did the kind of background stuff for marketing, you know, nothing on air. And I was like, eh, this is cool, but like, mm. it's not my vibe exactly. Mm. Uh, so the next day I went into the studio and it was the drive time show and the presenter handed me a piece of paper and was like, you are on in 15 seconds, this is a live read, don't mess it up. And I was like, I don't know what a live read is, but okay. And I went with it and I, I aced, like I don't think I've ever done like that again in my life. Like wow. that was the best I've ever done a live read. But I, I aced it and he was like, you need to do this. This is what you've got to do. And I was like, I need to do this. This is it. Oh. Like, this is my entire career. I have to do it. Um, so obviously I have still a year of school to do. And then I started studying and it was just too expensive. So I stopped and I did admin and waitressing and repairing and all sorts of stuff in between. Were this vision in my school? Yeah, I had to, I had to, there was no ways I could let it go. Um, eventually I entered a competition on 5FM to run the station for a day and I won it. It was a hectic process, it was a boot camp, so I had to do like the marketing and the, uh, I had to do a lot of charity stuff for them. And I won it and I went up to Joburg and I spent the day there and I was like, this is definitely it. So I found a course to do online, it was terrible, like this. There's no radio course that I am aware of that will ever get you into radio. Can I just tell you a story? Uh, I attempted to, do, attempted to do a course as well. I don't want to mention the name. And yeah, probably just three weeks. And I was probably like, the blue and yellow college. Blue, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, That's funny. Yeah, that. <laughs> I actually sent them an email and I said, if you don't mind, can I please edit your textbook for free? Wow. Because I was just so annoyed by wow. the fact that it wasn't typed out properly that I was like, this is not how you teach people. Yeah. But anyway, I did that and then I, I kind of left that alone. And when I was in Joburg, a lot of the Fire FM people mentioned to me that I should knock on MFM's door. And so I did. And I thought that, you know, I'd had this little like moment of radio mm. fame and they were going to be like, yeah, sure, yeah, come sure. through. They weren't. They were like, you need to audition essentially and do training. And it's like a two month training process. And at the time I was like, man, I don't know how I'm going to do this because I have to be at work, you know, I still got to earn an income. So I did it and I made it work. I gave my boss 48 hours notice and I was like, I'm sorry, I've got to go. I've got to pursue radio. I can't keep sitting, answering this phone. I hate this stuff. I don't care about anything that's not radio right now. And I did it and I got in and then I just started moving. Then I was moving quickly. I was always around. So my first show ever was a stand-in show because someone didn't pitch. And I think this is how it goes for a lot of people. Um, you are just around and so while you're around, you get that opportunity. But if you're not around, you're not going to be on the top of someone's mind. So my first thing was already that I was just there and I happened to be available to do that slot and it was a stand-in slot and I did my own show again the next day and I was supposed to be on graveyard for a while and I was on for about four weeks and then I moved and I was like okay cool one of the things that I was worried about was like I love radio but what if I really suck 
now I've quit my job. I'm working as like a waitress and au pair and an admin person and all this stuff on the side and hustling to make an income. Yeah. But if this doesn't work out, I'm basically screwed. It's done. Like radio dreams. And there was shattered. no there, there was no other backup. There was no backup plan. Wow. I didn't have a single backup plan because I was like, this is what I have to do. <laughs> so if I had a backup plan, I think it would have been too easy when it reached the point of me being like, I don't know if I can do this. I'm running on 20 minutes sleep. I need to quit. Then like, if I had somewhere to quit too, I probably would have. Mm. And then later on gone, damn it, I should have just stuck it out. But there was nothing else I could do. So I had to make it work. And at MFM, I set up the news team and I did the chart show and I was like involved everywhere I could be. I was on the music pilot committee, I was on the DJ committee. I was like on all the things that I could do that some of the stuff I didn't even really want to be there. And I was like, just do it. Because when stations like Good Hope look at you, they go, where can we fit you in? And we need to be able to fit into everywhere. Because of course, there is going to be a day when someone is sick or they're not going to show up and you're there and then ta-da you save the day and again the cycle moves on for sure, for sure. so that's essentially also how i started at good hope they said cool we need you ad hoc if someone's sick or they can't do the show then we'll do read news over weekends and i was like perfect happy mm. foot in the door and one week later someone was sick they didn't do the show, so it was like, hey, we know you destroyed. So the moral of the story is don't get sick. Don't get sick. <laughs> I'm ready. You're sick. I'm going to be there. I'm going to take your job. <laughs> Every time you are not available for your job, I will be there. Be there. <laughs> That's wow. terrible. I already hope you get fed about that. Oh, well. It's true, though. There's going to yeah, be someone sure. hungrier Definitely. than you. Definitely. So watch your back. Like, do what you got to wow. do until you are actually, like, booked off by a doctor. Go sick. Be sick. Mm. It's fine. Don't make everyone else sick, but like, don't take off work unnecessarily. I'm there. I will take your job. <laughs> so I did that for a little while, and then things just happened, and I landed up on eight to eleven, and then things happened again, and I landed up on two to four. And while I was on eight to eleven, um, I was getting there early, and I was showing face, and I was like putting all the time in, and eventually I got put on breakfast, and that was a few months down the line, and I kind of woke up one morning and went, it's only been like six months or so that I've been at Good Hope and I'm already on breakfast. Mm. Like my goal for breakfast was a year down the line as like Some people only reach like in two years or Yeah, whatever. yeah. And I just yes. wanted to be a stand in there. I didn't, I hadn't thought that I was actually capable of being on the show. And then when Nigel moved from breakfast to drive, I obviously went yeah. with and that's how I landed up where I am now and still doing everything that I can do at the station. Like I do news, traffic, sports, I can do presenting, I do shadowing, I can DJ, um, I clean the studio, like wow. <laughs> everything you can think of that involves radio, I make sure I can do it. But, but with, with saying that, what is the end game in for you? Doing all of these things, they sh I mean, it can't just be, I want to be this radio presenter. What is the end game? So, the ultimate end game. For me, I want to have a job, which I'm very lucky to have, where I wake up every day and don't wait for Friday. And on Sundays, I don't drain Monday. Mm. That is my end goal. And I think it's because I had to learn very young and very quickly that that happens so fast, where you're just like, oh, I want to fall in sick today. And then the next day, it's like, oh, man, I just wish there was a reason I didn't want to be at work. Yeah. Um, and it's kind of it's kind of been like the worst thing for me to experience is that unhappiness because I'm actually not the happy person. Mm. I need to be happy where I am. So so we as human beings should not settle for second place. No. You cannot be what life are you living? Like what is your purpose if you're dreading all the days of the week? Mm. There's five days of the week and two days of the weekend. You need to be like, damn, I can't work this weekend. That sucks. Sure. Not necessarily in the workaholic, like yeah, yeah, running yeah, from yeah, my yeah, life of kind of way, but you should love what you're doing enough that you don't care if you lose sleep. Mm. You don't care if, you know, you are working seven days a week and you're like, oh, I'm tired because that tired is like, I'm tired, but I'm grateful. Yes. I'm stoked. Yes. I love this. This is my passion. This is what lights a fire in my stomach. Okay, before we wrap it off, tell me about your newest venture, television. 
So I am now a TV news anchor, something I've always wanted to do. I used to watch ENCA pretty much from when they started. Yeah. Instead of having music as our background noise in our house, it's news. Yeah. So we are constantly watching the news. And I used to watch ENCA and SABC News and like switch between the channels. Of course, Rian Krabach was in there, here and there. And I was always like, this is really cool. Like. I have a very weird interest in news that's probably a little bit, I don't want to say twisted, but like, why do people want to? <laughs> why am I interested? We're all a like, bit twisted, all of, yeah. us, all of us, all of us. But I enjoy it. I'm like, yeah. oh, damn, it's yeah. fine. That's cool. Oh, it's nice. This is a cool story about, like, you know, I don't know. Something. Yeah. yeah. Court cases. <laughs> and I, like, court I get cases. really excited about court <laughs> cases. <laughs> so I, I was trying to break in, and, and I just, people kept saying no because I didn't have a degree. Mm. And it was very frustrating because I know how to do it mm. and I know I know how to do it and I know that I'm good at it. Mm. But I couldn't break that barrier again, which was a similar thing with radio. It's just going through the same journey over and over. It's just like when you get those how many no's, you yes. have to go, okay, well, fine, that's not working. I'm going to do it a different way. So I've basically gone to Cape Town TV, which is community yes. TV, and I've gone back to the MFM side of life. And the great thing is that when you're working with people who are new to the industry, they're so pumped because you get kind of tainted by the media industry and you can get very negative. And surrounding myself with like people who are as excited about this stuff as me has just been like, it's just elevated the whole TV thing. Like, okay, so give us Vicky's three life hacks. Three life hacks, don't get sick. Don't get sick. <laughs> Yeah, use sanitizer everywhere. Studios are disgusting. Spray your stuff. Sneeze into your hands. Wipe your hands. Keep your keep your studio space clean so you don't get sick. Because when you get, don't sick, get sick, I will be there and She'll I will take your job. <laughs> Life hack number two: two. just show up. Mm. Just show up. Show up early. Stay late. Don't be a clock watcher. Make it work. If someone asks you to do something, do it. Mm. Think about it later. Work out the logistics later. If you, it's better for you to be like, listen. I'm coming, I might be a little bit late, or I might need to leave early then just to say no, sorry. Mm. Because it means something to people when you show For up. Sure. And they'll remember that. Definitely. And there'll be a time when you need them to show up. Definitely. And they will go, I can only go for 10 minutes, but I'll be there. And then I'd say third, like, just, just remember why you started. You can't be in something because you want Instagram following. You can't be in something because you want to be famous. There's very little glamour in the media industry. It's really not glamorous to be behind a mic. It's hard and it's a lot of work and it's not necessarily the most pay in the world. Yeah. So if you're cool with having multiple jobs to earn enough money, then go for it. If radio is your passion, do it. But if you're getting into it for the glam or the Instagram or whatever, it's not a good idea. Do it for you, do it for your passion. Sure. I'm not gonna get sick anymore. <laughs> yeah, don't. I'm there. I've got flashes in my pocket. I'll take your job. I am beat bangers. <laughs> thank you so much for spending some time with us. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And that is another episode of The Process. Check you guys next time.